Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how I achieve this look using DaVinci Resolve color grading. This is the main talking headshot that I use on most of my videos in the studio. And you're going to want to subscribe because very soon I've got a video coming out on the exact lighting setup I use to achieve this look. So we've currently got this empty node here. What I'm going to do is open up the gallery and I'm going to apply this power grade that I've already crafted for this particular view. And we'll clean up the graph. We're going to select all of these nodes and I'm going to start off by disabling them and then we're going to go through each node in turn and I'm going to explain what it's doing. So this video was shot in a log profile, Sony S Log 3. So the first thing we're going to do in this node, if I enable it and open up the effects, is we're converting from S Log 3 into DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. I'm not going to go into loads of detail about color space transforms as I've got loads of videos already on how to use these color space transforms which I'll link to in the description. If I hold down my middle mouse button and scroll across right to near the end here, this node is converting from our working color space DaVinci Wide Gamut into Rec 709 which is what we're delivering to and uploading to YouTube. So watch what happens on the left here when I hit Control D. Now we get a much more normal looking image and we could actually export this exactly as it is but we're going to apply some other color grading just to finesse things and get them looking a bit better. At the end of this node tree I've got this node here and if I just enable this by hitting Control D you can say we get these weird colors on the face. This is a tool if I open up effects which gives you these options to check your exposure and check your skin tones. Again, I've got a full video on this, so I'm not gonna go into it, but I will link to it in this video's description. So we'll just go and disable that. The first node here is exposure. Let's hit Control D, and just so you can see a bit better, this is normalizing the exposure. If you watch what happens down here on the waveform, this is with it disabled, and this is with it enabled. And all we're doing here is we're making some changes in these primary color wheels. It's a very subtle change. All we're doing is bringing the gain down just a little bit here to 0.9. The next part of the logical node tree is contrast. And watch what happens when I enable this. This is giving us a lot more contrast. This is before and this is afterwards. And as a byproduct, when you add contrast, it also gives the impression of adding saturation. You can see down here, we've got contrast set to 1.198 and pivot of 387. The third node here is labeled color, bal or color balance. Watch what happens when I enable this. And what this is doing is it's giving us the initial color balance. And to do that, I'm just using the offset here in the primaries. And I've just dragged this little dot down a little bit just to cool off the image and to get a good starting point for the color balance. So really, these three nodes at the start here are doing all of the heavy lifting. They're doing all of the work to set the initial look and feel. And then the rest of the nodes are really used to finesse that. So typically, I'll get these three nodes looking 99% of the overall look and feel or the quality of the grade. And once I'm happy with these three nodes, then I'll move on to the rest of the node tree. So we've got some parallel nodes nodes here and what we're doing is we're taking the same information from this color balance node and we're giving the exact same copy to the input of all of these four nodes. So that means we can work independently in these four nodes and whatever we do in each node won't affect the other node and then they are all the output from all of them comes back into this joining section here. This is where the parallel nodes get merged together and then we'll look at the rest of this in just a minute. So let's start off with this first parallel node, this H. HDR node. I'm going to hit Ctrl D to enable that. And this node is used to modify the HDR color wheels here. So this template node tree allows me to really quickly work through a color grade. And what we've got going on here, you can see that the highlights have just been brought down just a little bit. It's very subtle. If I zoom into my forehead here, this is enabled, this is disabled enabled, disabled. So it's just kind of taking the bite out of those highlight areas on my forehead. Let's enable it again. And you can see that it just kind of softens that out and takes away the sharpness or the bite of those bright highlights. All right, the next parallel node here is called color one. And I use this to perform any color grading tweaks. Remember that we've already done the main color balance here. This is really the putting the icing on the cake or the cherry on the icing on the cake. Let's enable this and we'll head over to the curves here. And if we head over here, 
I'm using the hue versus hue curve. And what this allows you to do is choose a color and then change that color to another color effectively. What I'm doing here is if I disable this node, it's very, very subtle. I'm just taking a little bit of the redness out of my skin here on my cheek and my forehead and my nose. This is with it disabled and this is with it enabled. Super, super subtle. It's just because I tend to have quite bad skin or quite red skin a lot of the times, especially if I'm recording in a hot studio. If I come down here and make sure that this is selected, just to show you what this does, if I increase this way up and down, it's changing the hues of those reds in my skin to different colors. Let's just undo that. All right, next up, I've got this spare node. If I enable this, it's not actually doing anything. This is if I've got anything particularly tricky that I need to fine tune. And then we've got color two here. If I enable this, I'll just make sure we undo that. So if I enable color two, again, we've got hue versus hue happening here. If I disable it, this is again, very, very subtle. But if I change this, you can see we're just affecting a little bit of the skin. It's really, really subtle, but it's just to try and get a little bit of the yellowy or the green out of the skin, just to give it a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of color. So in theory, if I disable all of these, we'll still have a good looking image that we could export but these nodes just give us a little bit of fine tuning. All right, let's move on. Next up, we've got this tweak node. I'm gonna enable this, and you can see this is having a subtle shift. What I use this tweak node for is the final adjustments to the quality of the image before we move on to the final stages. So this just does some minor changes if I'm not quite happy with the output of all of these parallel nodes. In this case, I'm just doing some changes in the color wheels here and down here, I've just increased the saturation just a little bit of the overall image. And you can see that if I zoom in, hopefully, this is with the node enabled and this is with it disabled enabled, disabled, enabled. It's just giving us a bit of richness to the cult, to the skin tones. All right, next up, we've got these three window nodes. Again, these are parallel nodes, so they're all taking their initial input from this tweak node, and these are used to create power windows. Let's enable this first node and watch what happens in the image. You can see at the bottom, we're getting this desk darkened a bit. And if we come over to the power windows, you can see I'm using this gradient here, and we can turn on, or make sure the power windows are turned on here. And I could move this around just to show you that we do have a gradient here. If I enable these two, we don't actually have any power windows on these, but if I wanted to, I could go and create a really quick and dirty vignette by doing something like this. There's better ways to create vignettes or more subtle ways to create vignettes. But if I wanted to, I could use this and then drop the gamma and then invert the mask, something like that. So these window nodes get joined together and then We've got these final two effects nodes. I'm gonna just enable both of those. And typically I don't use those normally in this overall setup, but these enable us to add any effects. So for example, maybe in effects two, we wanted to come in here and we wanted to add some sharpening, maybe reduce the sharpen amount, reduce the fine detail size, and maybe just blend it in with the original image a bit. The next video you should watch is my lighting setup, just so you can see how this color grade goes together with the actual lighting setup. That video is coming out very soon. In the meantime, feel free to watch this one and subscribe to the channel, of course, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.